Hi folks. Well, wow. Reverend Isaac here. For those of you who know me well, uh, you know that I have uh, spent a lot of time hanging out with different ministers, even since I was uh, at a very young age with uh, clergy folks in my family. I feel so blessed to have received uh, the gifts and the wisdom of those who have gone before me, both clergy and lay in my family. But I have to admit, when I was first uh, trying to discern my way in ministry, and some of you folks have heard me speak about this before, it wasn't always easy figuring out who am I uniquely, who, who is God calling me to be in terms of my life of faith? Um, as I got older and into my 20s, I started to get a bit more comfortable in my own shoes and began to realize, yeah, there are ways that um, God has made me in a unique way and has called me to express my gifts in a unique way. And uh, that goes for ministry. That kind of goes too, just for even who I am as an individual. Uh, while there are, is a great love of the out of doors in my family and amongst my, my different family members, um, in terms of uh, those who have gone uh, come before me, I, I would say I may be the only one who is quite as enthusiastic about jumping, say, in really cold water. <music> Maybe too, even the fact that I seem to have a, a strange love of jumping off of really high rocks into, into water as well. Part of that is just what it means to be Isaac, and, uh, uh, and it's good for me to be able to embrace uh, that. Uh, our scripture story for this week, the story of Solomon, finds Solomon kind of trying to figure out where God is calling him, and God invites him to, uh, uh, to ask uh, what, what gift he should be able to receive, and he considers all of the different gifts that he knows his uh, father, uh, King David, um, has expressed in terms of his leadership. Uh, but what he asks of God is to be able to have a sense of discernment between good and evil or right and wrong and to be able to lead his people with that sense of wisdom. And, and God's a huge fan of this response. And uh, God says, you know what, there's never going to be anybody like you. Um, again, uh, Solomon, there's never been anybody before you who's quite like you. And uh, you're going to be able to uh, offer this leadership to my people. Well. This is a beautiful call for Solomon. But I think that for many of us, we could, uh, we could hear these words of God and also affirm that this is God's calling to us as well. Um, I don't know where you're at in your life, whether you're watching this and you're in school or you're in your professional life or retirement or, or, or some other expression of, of your, the living out of your call to be a person of faith. But whatever that may be, I hope that you have a sense that there has been no one like you before and there never will be somebody quite like you again. That God's love for you is special and different. And uh, you know, I'm looking at the different uh, questions uh, that are the most popular Google searches about God. And one of the most popular is, does God love me? And uh, that's an important question that we, we wanna be able to ask. Does God actually love me? There's billions of human beings. How can God really know um, who I am in the midst of this, uh, this vast sea of humanity? And yet God does love each one of us and God sees us as being unique. And God calls us in turn to love one another in deeply unique ways. God gives us unique ways to be able to express that love. So I guess what I'd like to say is my hope for you is that um, today, whatever challenges you're meeting or maybe uh, if you're trying to discern where God is trying to lead you next, uh, know that God is at work in your life in unique ways, that, that you're not just anonymous in this world, that God sees you, 
knows you and loves you and is calling to you to share your gifts in ways that maybe you hadn't even imagined before. Uh, but listen for that voice and, and know that there's uh, been nobody like you before. There never will be somebody like you again. And, and that's amazing. Well, with a sense of trust in what God is doing in each one of our unique lives and, and through these souls that we have, let's pray these words together. God, we are listening for your guidance. Will you make these words of Scripture live for us? No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall rise after you. We give you the strengths and weaknesses of our pasts. We offer you our hopes and fears for the future. Open us to the unique love that you give to each soul. In this moment, nurture that love. Allow us to bear fruit. We trust that nothing can separate us from your compassion made known to us in Christ Jesus. Lead us to the laying down of selfishness and greed. Draw us closer to those who have called us to serve. God of strength, we pray for our leaders, elected officials, community organizers, committee chairs. As you gave your wisdom to Solomon, help them and us to work for a more just society. Spirit, we do not know how to pray as we ought. Intercede in us with sighs too deep for words. In the midst of the innumerable longings of humanity, fashion our lives to respond to this world's need. Amen.